I was doing a little coke crank. All of a sudden, these two people showed up at my door. Where's 95? And he flashes his badge at me. Oh, there's 95. We're taking you to a rehab up in Utah. Welcome to our world. Asking insurance is like the only thing I like to get a good high. You are an addict. We're in a situation where we all need to kind of put our energies together and figure out how we're going to get out of here. Miss music really bad. I love cigarettes. At least for me right now, it would be much more beneficial for me to be home. I don't know if I have a home to go back to. It's just like part of living out here, really. My concern is, is that should just take off. Kevin! We don't use punishment out here. It's a natural consequence. They have no control over you. I don't want to change. I don't want to be here. I'm Matt Gould, and this is Tris Corton and Lara Huey. And we just spent six weeks with a program called Wilderness Quest. All right, I want to see people doing sit-ups and push-ups this morning. Living with a group of about 10 drug-addicted teenagers in the desert in southeast Utah. And quit 1-800-WAH about what your parents are doing. My introduction to these kids came as they were dropped off on a vacant highway by professional escorts. Can I leave then because I wasn't ordered by a judge to be here? Our plan was to follow these kids as they went through this life-changing experience. If my parents had said, we're going to send you to a rehab if you keep up with this shit, I would have stopped. Bullshit. Yeah. You don't even know. And when we first got out there, we didn't realize how isolated we were going to be. We had a problem this morning. We lost a group member in a snowstorm. This was serious survival training. There's nothing out here. And when we headed out, we didn't take tents, matches, not even toilet paper. OK, where's the little sticks, you guys? I don't spend that much time with teenagers, much less troubled teens, and I didn't think any of them were going to change. But I think we were really in for a shock. We're going over to Larry's house right now for the first time. He lives in downtown Monticello. Larry Wells runs Wilderness Quest, which is a rehab program for drug-addicted teenagers. Good morning, Wilderness Quest. This is Angela. Hi, Hi Larry. Howdy. Uh, this is no, I'm... Laura. Laura? Laura. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, right. well, I'll be we'll back. See you soon, then. Yeah, I'll come, I gotta come back and get this stuff. Larry Wells has been running this program for over 25 years. He's a recovered addict himself, and he feels that self-reliance combined with an outdoor environment is the first step towards helping troubled teens face their problems. First off, I was raised in the back country of Idaho, so I've always been partial to wilderness. And I always had a dream of having like a ranch or whatever, you know, to work with, to help kids out. I felt it was different in the days when I was involved in it. Uh, of course, there was only that was in the 50s. There was only one thing to do is they just locked you up in jail. <laughs> you know, and I didn't feel that was very productive. Dad, do you want me to get their clothes now? WNNM 762. That's a good idea, Rebecca. Okay, Marcel Vaster. This is your poncho. We're going to join 10 kids who were sent by their parents to live out in the desert for the next six weeks. Hopefully, they'll work out their problems while they're here. This is the Arctic hood. You sleep in it or you can wear it. It'll keep your head warm. You're next. Like, it's the first time it really hit me what, what we're doing here. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll have to see how it goes. I have sort of a mixture of excitement and uh, trepidation. So what they do is they come in here, and mile pole 65 is between. It's like right in there. It's in the middle when they're coming either way. Oh, wow. So we meet them at mile post 65. It's just 64, I mean. It's just a mile post. And the staff is just post. out there waiting mm -hmm. at the mile post? We're waiting here at mile post 64 for professional escorts who are delivering two new students tonight. I think they picked this location, which is in the middle of nowhere with like no gas station, no phone, no anything because there's some worry that these kids are going to like want to hitch a ride out of here because this is pretty scary looking landscape. It was a lot later and a lot colder when the escorts drove away leaving the first new student, 17-year-old Tara, in the hands of Wilderness Quest. 
Tara is the adopted daughter of strict Mormon parents. So how long are we out here for? 42 days. 42 days? Mm-hmm. How long did you think it was for? I didn't know. 38 days are out here, and then there's four days in the family program. And that's where your family will come. And okay, so my question for you is, I have to ask you this. My birthday's in 20 days, and I'll be 18 years old. Can I leave then because I wasn't ordered by a judge to be here? That's your right, you know, because you are 18, you're an adult. Um, and my hope for you would be that you know by then why you're out here and maybe make some choices that would be better for your life. Right. How do you feel about being out here? It sucks. Puddles are the best. But it's right, right away, like Tara tried hard. to prove how yeah, tough she I is. I lived with a dealer up there. Uh, so <laughs> and so we'd always oh. hook up with just like little vials. It's totally cool. cool. Yeah, it was fun. We had hella fun up there. I was doing a little coke crank whenever it was around. I just, I mean, I just don't think that that I belong out here. If I want out of here bad enough, I'll find a way out. We're about to journey into the wilderness, and even though we're all excited, some of the kids are having second thoughts. I'm, I'm really nervous about going out there. Oh my god. We're going to be traveling through some pretty tough terrain, where one false move could be a matter of life and death. Never let go with your right hand. Acid and shrooms is like the only thing I like to get a good high. Yeah. And I mean, that's cool. It's nine hours. Actually, it's like until you go to sleep, really. And then... Until you can go to sleep. Yeah. I What, tripping? 16-year-old Kevin got into a lot of trouble in the last year for drugs, but his real problem is that he's always trying to manipulate people. Um, mainly just weed. That was what I was getting in trouble for. And, of course, I did some acid and some mushrooms and stuff. I never snorted nothing, though, so that's cool. I wouldn't really mess with that kind of stuff. And I'm going to stop doing drugs and stuff because, basically, I can't live, can't live at home while I'm doing that kind of stuff. My dad says when I'm 18, I'll be able to do whatever the hell I want. So what's your name? Jesse Logan and Samuels. Oh, I don't know if you want my last name. No, that's okay. So you just arrived. Are you nervous? Yeah. Yeah? So I guess you're going off right now. And um, tell me what your thoughts are. Um, well, I'm, I'm really nervous about going out there. Um, the past six months, I've been off and on kind of living on the street. Um, there was no real big family thing at home that like pushed me out onto the street. I just kind of ended up out there and I didn't really want to come back. I was, believe it or not, kind of having fun. Jessie seems so frail, both physically and emotionally, and I think she'll have a hard time blending in with the rest of the kids. My name is John Dupuy and I am a chief instructor at uh, Wilderness Quest. So you're saying end up in, in steer pasture? John's been through a lot. He's an ex-cult member he understands how the kids' minds work. He has a lot of reverence for wilderness and its power to heal, and he's more comfortable here than anywhere else. I, I like the idea of just hiking all the way down. Uh, have you been, you've hiked that canyon before. Are there ruins and stuff in there? No, there's not much in there. there. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna get our gear together. We're gonna hike down there. We're gonna go down that cliff, like you read about in Adventure Magazine. Let's do it. We're good to go. That's what these students begin to, to find out there. They begin to find self-respect. Oh, all right, this is okay. They get to hang out with themselves and make friends with themselves. And uh, you won't poison your friend. And if you become your own friend, obviously you're not going to poison yourself. As we hiked out the first day, the question on everyone's mind was, would any of these kids change? Could the program save any of them? If these kids ever get as squared away as me. Wilderness yeah. Quest finds ways to push kids past their safe boundaries. This process breaks them down in order to build them up stronger. Oh my god. <laughs> the first time they do this is the repel. How'd that I think this is a great thing for students to do on their first day. It just takes them out of their reality and they know they've done something. Can you imagine if you fell, you'd be dead like on impact. I mean, yeah, okay. I would die of fright in the first place, but I would die of fright. There's two ways you get killed on a repel. <laughs> One is if you're over messing around the edge of the cliff trying to watch your friend repel and you fall off. 
Never let go with your right hand. I believe very strongly that it's in direct proportion to the challenge overcame comes the growth. What I perceive as the challenge is, of course, the repelling. It's what the feeling you have after you've overcome that intense fear of stepping over that first, that first step. Oh, God. The repel is the first of a number of tests the kids have to pass in order to graduate to be able to go home. We need to concentrate. Yes, yeah, so right. Shut up! Yeah. I'm serious. OK, I really don't want to come back. Yeah, you do. You want to go? Uh, oh! Don't worry, I'm going to be like that to you. I'm just going to be like, <gasps> It's only been two days, and already Tara and another girl, Maki, have bonded. This leaves Jesse out. If not there, then it's probably going to be another Take up, Jeff. It's going to get vertical real soon, huh? Pardon? It's going to get vertical real soon, huh? I think a large part of what happens out here is unconscious. It's experiencing hope. It's getting hits of serenity. It's bonding with other people and caring relationships. It's learning how to speak the truth to yourself. Keep on walking. There you go. You're OK. You're OK. There you go. He's hanging. See? He's just hanging there. All right, good job, Jesse. Good job. Safe. The, the first part is the worst, definitely, and then I got over it. The fear, Shoot. I was, I couldn't breathe. Yeah. Rebelling! Oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> okay, see you guys later. Thank you, down. This is like the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my entire you're doing life. You're so good. Because I hate heights. You're gonna, you're gonna have a free, a free thing here. I just get to dangle. Yeah, you're gonna dangle. Woohoo! All right. How are your hands? <laughs> Shaking. Hey, Maki! It ain't that bad. I was supposed to yell that at her. It ain't that bad. You were just wor sitting on. You're packed for an hour, dude. You didn't do anything. As the hardships we all face get more intense, the frustration's starting to focus in on Kevin. That's bullshit. That's pissing me off so much because I know I was busy. And for Jesse, the going gets even tougher. I'm not sure how much we can do for her. Circle, you guys, circle. This morning I witnessed my first circle. For the Wilderness Quest people, the circle is a way of dealing with pent-up emotions and problems that arise during the day. And this is where the kids just let loose and say exactly how they're feeling. All right, what's going on? I saw you, you were just like, you were just were sitting on your pack for an hour, dude. You didn't do anything. Kevin's having the most problems in the group. He's the youngest and uh, he's got a lot of anger inside him. Can I go now? That's fucking bullshit. That's pissing me off so much because I know I was busy. What could take you? You cannot that tell me that I was sitting there and doing that because I know I was busy. I'm trying to get all my shit together. And when Romeo was accusing me of just taking his shit, I got even more pissed because I know I'm not. And then Andy is sitting here accusing me of just doing nothing, but I'm not doing nothing. If I put my bag together slow, it means that I don't know how to do it. Whenever somebody just says something to you, you just like go off, you know, like Andy's just like, well, what are you doing? And you're just like, don't talk to me like that. You know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Don't talk to me like that. But I know I went off and I'm, I'm sorry for that. Are you feeling attacked by no, the group? No, I, I wouldn't say attacked, but just discouraged. You know, I, I just don't trust you about that stuff for some reason, man. I just... It's day three, and Jesse still hasn't mastered her pack. You've got that on upside down. You can't carry your bedroll on they bottom. They could. All right. Could. There's no other way okay. I can do it now. Okay. okay, how did you do that then? I don't know. Oh my God. I'm not sure how much we can do. For her, she was breaking down, crying all the time. She uh, has a tough time hiking. Part of it is she is constantly kind of doing a whimper kind of thing. You got it. I got you. Oh God, this is like. It was my parents' idea to send me out here in the first place. You know, I'm used to sleeping on the ground, concrete, whatever. That's not a big deal. But then there's like the 
deprivation of alcohol and sex and all that great stuff that I kind of miss. Yeah, I think that is about uh, due to be redone. So they come in talking pretty tough and they find out quickly that that doesn't mean anything out here. We don't use punishment out here. I mean, it's, it's, it's natural consequences. In other words, it, if, uh, if we don't uh, do our packs right, we have long, miserable hikes where this stuff happens, you know? And uh, sometimes you have to learn lessons the hard way. And, and uh, tomorrow, I'm sure that our pack will be a lot better than it is today. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. We've uh, separated. Bye. The kids who have been out here for about three weeks have separated from the new kids. Bye, Laura. Bye. Laura's going with the girls and Larry in one direction, and I'm going with John and Kevin in the other. Our friends left. Oh, well, let's go get food. Food! Let's go get food. Yeah, we're done with our hike. All our buddies are over there, but we're not allowed to go see him. Who knows why? Because we're in hell. It makes me mad. I want to go see him. We're bad. Why? Because. Just like, say that's hello. Like, yeah. That was like our family for three days. I know. Two days. This is just bullshit. Because they were our security. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd come in, they were here. Mm -hmm. You know, and all of a sudden it's like, because they can't handle us, because they, you know, we're getting shit on. We're the ones that, you know, have to deal with it. You guys, you may not realize it at this point, but when three weeks come in and you've got a new bunch of kids going, you're gonna have your own group and you're gonna wanna keep that. It's gonna be time eventually for you to get back together and work on yourselves, because you'll be a long way from where you are today. Right now, the only thing that this camping thing is doing is keeping me away from smoking, is keeping me away from drinking, you know, is keeping me from eating real food, you know, and sleeping in a bed, you know? I mean, it's not doing anything. It's not changed my mind about anything. You know, if I went home today, I'd smoke. If I went home today, I'd drink. You know, my concern is, is that she'll just take off, because we are by roads. We'll spend the next few days dealing with that, you know, following her around. <laughs> came off pretty tough at first, but now that our trek's getting harder, she wants out. And I've decided that this fun and exciting journey in the wilderness is going to end. <laughs> so I'm going home. And Jessie's starting to feel like nobody likes her. It's really not that big a deal to me, and like, you know, I'm crying about it, and I feel really stupid, but... Yeah, just go ahead and show your feeling, Jessie, because there's nothing stupid about it. Larry's group is the new group, and they're still really fighting being out here in the desert. Morning. As soon as you're up and dressed and what have you, we'll have a quick uh, organizational kind of circle, because we're going into a different phase. We need a leader for the day. Tara, time to get up. No. Nope. Come on. Nope, don't touch me. Come on. Nope. Come on. No. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I want to make some oatmeal. Hey, Laura. Laura. 11 more days. <laughs> now, can you explain that statement for me? Yes, I can. My birthday is in 11 days, and I've decided that this fun and exciting journey in the wilderness is going to end. <laughs> so I'm going home. Tara is just daydreaming of going home. I mean, she cannot wait. She's just practically antsy. You know what? You guys are all bummed, and you guys are all grouchy, and you're and all like, sick. And like, if we could leave in 12 days, you're all be sick. so cheerful. And so I'm your big boost for the next 11 days. Oh. Who shakes the best? Hey, hey! Part of Jessie's problem with hiking all this time has been that she only has one contact lens. She lost one, so we've been trying to get her glasses. Walking's like always hard for me, and I think it was actually kind of cool today because you guys were like kind of at my level. I don't think Jessie's used to relating to people all that much. She's used to being 
an outsider? Um, it's really not that big a deal to me, and like, you know, I'm crying about it, and I feel really stupid. But yeah, just go ahead and show your feeling, Jesse, because it's there's nothing stupid about it. I just a group dynamics thing that kind of leaves me out, not intentionally, but kind of. I don't know. And you guys aren't like evil or anything. I just kind of feel like. You feel left out? Sometimes, yeah. It's not a big deal. Do you feel that on the outside, too? I mean, on the streets? No. So this has been way hard. Is it my turn? <laughs> okay, cool. Today was like a totally cool day. Since Tara's gotten out here, uh, she's been pretty focused on getting out of here. So I don't think she's had a chance to really examine why everyone else is out here. I don't know. I hope that these remaining days go really well. That's about it. Tomorrow on Eyewitness, in a heart-to-heart -heart talk, Larry opens up about his own troubled past. I've had a lot of self-destructive behaviors. Probably my primary addiction was probably sex. My secondary addiction was probably rage, and alcohol was probably third. Kevin tells us about how he's been manipulating all of us. Lying is like a lot, and you know, it's happened a lot in my past, and the reason why I lied is because of fear. And Tara loses it. No, no if my fucking parents had said, we're gonna send you to a rehab if you keep up with this shit, I would've stopped. But they Bullshit. didn't. Bullshit! Bullshit! Don't even tell me that! Bullshit. Because you know what? You don't even know!